C. In today's episode, I'm going to detail the ever-evolving design process. And it is definitely worth noting that this process is evolving primarily because it involves three parties, the manufacturer, the naval architect, and the most important party, obviously, the client. I purposefully use the word collaboration because that's essentially what it is. As you circulate your design, every party is going to have their opportunity to provide their input. And a lot of this is discussing different ideas from different points of view. The manufacturer has a point of view of how do we do this best? The naval architect says, well, this is the best way it's going to function. And then the client says, I want to be able to use the same item in this way. So you all have to work together to form exactly what the client wants in the end. Initially, a lot of this falls on the shoulders of the naval architect because it is their job to communicate through the design and the drawings exactly what the client wants. It's also very important that this naval architect understands the expectations that every single client that they have has for the outcome of their yacht. This will differ drastically from yacht to yacht. It is up to the naval architect as well to communicate these clients' expectations and how they expect to achieve these results to the manufacturer. That is why it is very important that the three of these parties, the client, the manufacturer, and the naval architect, all work together under the same understanding that you want to build the best yacht that you possibly can for the client. A lot of ideas will be shared from the different parties throughout this process and fully expect that your design will change. As you can see, with the three parties involved, everybody's going to have different ideas with different motivations. At the end of the day, it's very important that you as the client get what you want out of your build. So throughout this collaborative design process, it's important that you as the client take notes. For me specifically, I documented every single conversation and then circulated summary emails amongst the three parties throughout every part of this process. I found this so important because a yacht of any magnitude has tens of thousands of parts. It's inevitably that something might get missed or somebody might misunderstand what your intent is for a certain area. This happened to us in several different parts of the yacht. Uh, one example was in our bar. We mentioned we wanted refrigeration, ice maker, and a wine chiller. Well, the refrigeration that was provided, I'm not going to say by who, uh, would only fit about four teacups and didn't serve the intents and purposes of what we wanted, which was removing a stewardess having to go down into the galley to collect a can of soda, for example. Another reason for taking summary notes on every single conversation is to have everything in writing and dated as much as possible. Because now you can always refer back and say, nope, you were notified on this day that this is what I wanted. Please adjust your drawings and then resubmit them to us for our approval and review. So please keep in mind that absolutely nothing is going to happen on your project until all three parties are in agreement. And I obviously would suggest that this agreement but be done in writing. Another invaluable tool for us was Microsoft Word track changes because you can see the changes that everybody is making to the same document. And then the way that we circulated the documents were always dated and version numbered. And eventually it got so muddied with changes that we all finally had to agree to what was in front of us, accept all the changes, and then start from scratch. And then it continued again. We had to go through this process two or three times before we finally agreed and all parties were on the same page. Please keep in mind that when designing from scratch, nothing will actually be done until all parties agree. So now that all three parties have agreed, the first thing that the Naval Architect needs to do in order to actually start pro progression and work on your yacht is the 3D hull lines. This is an absolutely terrible point for the client because nothing actually happens for about six months. That's how long it took to do the weight study, do the hull lines, adjust the trim, do the VPP or the wind studies of the performance of the yacht and nothing has actually happened. But you've now paid a fully non-refundable deposit either to the manufacturer or the naval architect depending on how you've set up your contract. So you're literally just sitting and waiting for something to happen. Yes, there is a lot going on in the background in this time. The naval architect is drawing your GAs. They're in constant communication with the manufacturer about the how are we going to actually assemble this boat together? 
And you as the client should be doing as much research as possible, narrowing down the exact name, brand, and model number of everything on the interior of the boat that you want. This is faucets, fridges, freezer, freezers, galley equipment, dive equipment, dive compressor, uh, pulleys, winches, blocks, like the list goes on, it's pretty much endless here. Please note, as the client, you have to be patient here. You've paid a considerable sum and you're working in good faith as well as the naval architect and the manufacturer that all of this is gonna to come together. And for us, it took about six months of this waiting period for even the 3D hull lines to be released to the manufacturing firm just so they could start building the mold for our hull. So while the 3D hull lines are being drawn, somebody's doing a weight study. The weight study is imperative because it calculates the displacement of your hull. And you may need to shift certain elements of your yacht forward, backwards, or side to side to make sure the trim of the vessel is accurate or the boat literally sits flat in the water. So finally, now that 3D hull lines have been delivered to the manufacturer, physical construction can begin. This was an absolute thrilling time for us because for me, it felt like no longer was our yacht project a pipe dream. Physical construction could begin and hulls were actually starting to take shape. This was just mind boggling and so exciting for us, not to mention a huge relief because we're now no longer working on good faith. We're seeing physical progression. Depending on the size of the mold, it can take six to eight months to build. This can depend on several things. The materials that the factory has, the workforce that it has available, the specific tooling like CNC machines that they have. But again, you must be patient. But you can also be excited here because physical progression and physical process, physical progress has begun. So now that the manufacturer is busy and has something to keep them occupied for the next six to eight months, this is your opportunity as the client to continue with what I would like to consider the refinement stage of your general arrangement or the layout of your yacht. Because now the naval architect has a 3D rendering of the hull. So they have the exact dimensions for your interior. And as your interior design progresses, you now have the physical requirements for your refrigeration, your galley, your layout, your range, uh, pretty much anything that you want on the inside. And now you have the exterior limitations. So now you can start to identify workflows, pinch points, bottlenecks throughout the flow of your yacht. Now you can actually visualize how you're going to use the different spaces on your yacht, whether it be the bathroom in the master, where do you want to place the main head? Where do you want the day head? Is it going to be, are you going to be able to walk between the main dining room table and the bar in order to get to the galley? More importantly, are you, is a stewardess or any staff member going to be able to do that holding four full size dinner plates without tripping over something or dropping a plate on at the table? I've said a few times that this interior design process is ongoing and no longer just a 3D model. You're principally going to be working with this in 2D just to see the floor layouts. That 2D drawing is called your general arrangement. It is the general arrangement of all of your interior fits and finishes, whether it's seating, settees, tables, storage, drawers, cupboards, anything you want. That collectively is called your general arrangement. There is more on our general arrangement later. That is actually a whole nother episode when I take you through a full tour and why we designed the specific rooms that we did. So now that you have your GA generally accepted and all parties have kind of agreed to it, now is your opportunity to discuss and again, continue with the refinement stage of your boat. The Naval Architect throughout this process is gonna come up with ideas and options that they might think work better or that they have seen work better or have firsthand experience that will benefit you from other boats that they've designed. At the end of all of this, it is the client's responsibility to make sure that you are getting exactly what you are looking for in your yacht. And again, I have to keep reiterating this process. Summary notes of every single conversation are imperative here because at least that way you've documented, if for no other reason yourself, why you made that decision at the time. So as I said in the beginning of this video, that entire process is ever evolving and it will continue throughout the construction process. For us, that's another two and a half years from the date of filming this video. Uh, as recently as one week ago, 
we made some material changes on the interior GA of our yacht because we found out that something was unavailable or it did not fit within what we thought was the allotted space for it. So this is the main point, again, within your refinement process where you get to select the workflows and make sure that everybody has room, whether your yacht is crewed or uncrewed, how are you gonna use it? Make sure that those spaces are comfortable for you when you are in each position and make sure that your galley is designed for a chef if that's what you want, or if you're a chef yourself, your galley is comfortable for you to work, work in. So for us building from scratch, this process was actually quite complicated. And I personally don't have experience in this matter, but I've heard from other owners that have built multiples of a whole number from a different range, and they found that this process wasn't anywhere near as complicated as we have found it. After all, we are starting from scratch. They at least have a basis to go from. So let's take example, a 60 foot yacht that's out there and they've built 10 of them. They know what does work, they know what has not worked, they know what will work, and they certainly can look at options that may or may not work better for you and your specific use of the yacht. Us, we were literally starting from a blank slate and had to design and come up with all of these elements based on all of our other experiences, put together, assembled, and then tested in 3D. My wife and I actually took our GA, had it put to scale, and then put tape on the floor in several rooms of our house just to try and go through the workflows of these different rooms. Is this bathroom too small? Is the shower compartment, does it make it feel like a little cocoon? What's the flow of food through our galley? We used all of these elements with this tape on the ground just to experience and make sure that we had a minimal feeling as best we possibly could. Some yards actually do a full mock-up where they build the rooms and the exterior barriers out of plywood. We didn't have that opportunity because we weren't planning on flying back and forth to and from China and having them do a full mock-up for us. And I know that just putting tape on the ground doesn't give you the limitations of a room as you can always see beyond the tape. It definitely helped that I could put plates out, albeit on the floor, so I could actually plate a dinner and practice and make sure that I had enough counter space to lay out the appropriate number of plates that I had for guests at my table. So just to finish off this episode, patience is your number one thing here. You gotta be patient with the naval architect, you have to be patient with the manufacturer, and just trust and work on good faith that everything is going together. For me as an owner, this was the hardest thing for me to do. I wanted everything done yesterday, but I've once found that as soon as I took a deep breath and relaxed, was patient with the process, the results started to come and it started to feel a little bit more real and a little bit more, I'm looking for the word here, but just calm and understanding and realized that everybody was actually working towards the same goal, which is to build this full custom carbon catamaran. So as usual, if you like this episode or found anything interesting, please like, subscribe, and share. As always, reach out to me at sketchc at gmail.com. Thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon.